Hello and welcome to a line war league game between Barracuda in blue and Puck in red. As always, just a quick look at the player performances in the league so far. Barracuda hasn't played too much. He only played three games, but he won all of them. So I would say kind of in a winning streak. And his last game was actually against Puck. So this is the their second game where Barracuda will be um, the one with the advantage, so to speak. Puck, on the other hand, is uh, maybe more in a losing streak. These are the latest games. Uh, so he actually lost seven in a row and only has one win so far. So right out the gate, this is, uh, I think, we are all forming a um, a favorite in our head for this game, but anything can happen. Barracuda on a 100% winning streak so far as one of the only ones, though that being said, also only played three games. So let's see if, um, if Puck can do anything about that today. And if nothing else, watch and learn, because Barracuda is very good, so... I think it's going to be a fun and interesting game anyways. And I'm speaking for more or less all players. I think uh, even the best of the best can learn from, from Barracuda. So everyone has a chance to learn today. Especially including me. <laughs> So both are, and that is one thing, Barracuda is actually extremely good at the, um, the picking phase, I feel like. He's, uh, I feel like he almost always comes out on top. And I don't know who's, uh, he definitely has more territories. He got all the, the ones you need in a, like to, to start uh, in a, like use all your starting six. Puck has that as well now. And Puck seems confident to, to go with the north. Um, I think Barracuda has the strongest starting position. He can insta-build these towns. He has one gas, so that's maybe his biggest concern, only having one gas. This one would be the next, but it's very vulnerable both to sea and uh, air, especially if like Puck's advantage is definitely this island, but it's about timing when to get there because you need that um, expense to go there in the first place, either by plane or by navy. So if you put down a shipyard, build transport boat to send four units over here for infantry, that's a lot of money actually spent on just going over here and not actually capping anything in the meantime or increasing your eco uh, in any way. And very surprisingly, it seems like Puck starts down here. I would definitely have thought he would have started up here. Because now Barracuda has access to one, two, three, maybe even four gases. Plenty of towns. Basically, Puck traded this piece of land for all of this. And that's just not a good trade, in my opinion. Barracuda with double factory, one barrack, and one airport. With, is that a heli? Yeah, I think it's a heli. Puck goes tanks. Which I think would have made much, much more sense if he did that up here. He has this gas, he has this gas. 
Well, not this was in the in between them, to be fair. But he has this gas. It's much more open for tanks. He would there's so much more room for the tanks to navigate in open fields where they move fast. Now, Puck has to move tanks in this much narrower space, and there's so much forest and mountains. And Barracuda basically just have to block off here. And then the tanks would have to traverse this forest where helis and infantry can easily jump those tanks. Puck also with a town and an early refinery. I would sometimes maybe suggest build a industry before just to get that, like squeeze that extra uh, eco out because you don't need the gas right away you have that starting gas though to be fair it's on a mountain as well so it takes extra time to build this gas I like that Pug is already trying to uh, defend himself against any helis That is definitely a good combo, tanks and Sam's. Because tanks' biggest weakness are, of course, helis. The issue is one advantage of the tanks are their speed. And that's just not a thing for the Sam's. So the tricky part is to keep them together until you maybe suddenly make a rush with, with your tanks. I do think Barracuda is surprised that Pug is here, just as I would have been. So, a slight advantage there for Pug. But already in a moment, Pug's expansion ability is very, very limited. Look at how many territories Barracuda can cap each minute. Like if he has, if he spreads out the infantry like he does, these will cap so many territories. For every minute that is passing, well, not multiple units or uh, territories for, for each minute, but you know what I mean. While here, Puck is just slowly capping one territory at a time. And I think it's obvious for everyone that capping seven territories instead of one gives you seven times as much income. And this is exactly what I was talking about. The first tank got caught in the forest. Second one is 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 gonna die on this mountain ridge. I think. Maybe not. But it will die in a minute. Is he going for... Yeah, he's going for the gas. Which makes sense. But Barracuda with a very nice dig in. And I like that Puck puts down a few barracks because... They... Like it always a, a worry that suddenly a Barracuda just or your opponent shows up with a bunch of infantry when you go that tank rush. Barracuda with a tank of his own in an attempt to defend. Once again, it's, it seems not important. But it's so important to just drive around. It's so much faster. These helis will run out of gas now. So that's the one thing that uh, that Pug is going for him. And that's what he needs to to take advantage of now.
And once again, I would probably not send these tanks directly into the forest, but on the other hand, it is a nice flank on this entrenchment. So it's, it's not a bad move at all, but you could have gone around here and tried to find the, the buildings, the producers. But I must admit, this was actually a nice move as well. It's just something I would not have done. Which says nothing about how good of a move it is. <laughs> I wonder if it would have been better if Puck switched off Sam's and just focusing on keeping gas away from Barracuda. He could be producing tanks and using them as an as quote unquote anti air. Uh just by refusing Barracuda any gas. Because right now Pog is building anti-air for uh, for air that's basically not there. Of course, all of a, uh, all of a sudden you do risk uh, 50 helis showing up. But uh, if you keep that refinery down, then you really don't have to worry about it. Not that much, at least. Let's look at the eco. 525 for Pug. 500 for Barracuda. So Pug is actually ahead. And he is building... Uh, it's this town, and now he's building industry. So very nice uh, eco versus production balance, balance that Pug has going on. But he is playing against the clock. And for every minute that he's not getting further into Barracuda's base, Barracuda will increase his eco much faster. And I don't understand why Puck do not have more focus on keeping this down. It's now that he has that opportunity to get there while the helis uh, are out of energy. So that's a bit of a weird choice. But maybe he's feeling confident with these number of Sams. I mean, that could be another way to do it instead of m my version of keeping the gas down. Just build enough, enough Sams and push. And don't really care about five, eight helis. But I think Puck needs to expand to this island. It's very common and I see this a lot and it, I do it myself. Like you feel you have some momentum and you keep putting down producers. But it's, it's just so hard to push through. So my prediction is that Puck will try to just, yes, I can get him. If I just, I just need a few more units, then I can actually push through and, and win the game. Uh, but he will not be able to actually move this front line at all. Maybe a tiny bit, but it will take such a long time that Barracuda's eco will improve so much that he can push back, basically. Assistance. 
and you just have to remove that. Uh, remove what? Remember that this is a, a very slow game, so even if you have the upper hand production-wise, it will take a long time to push the front line back, even just a, a few territories. Park is really aggressive. Now he needs to get his uh, Sams in the right spot. I wonder if he can... No, he cannot see them. So I suspect these helis might get this barracks. Let's look at the eco again, because I could imagine it might have changed by now. 600 for Puck. 650 for Barracuda. So Park has increased his by 75 and Barracuda by 150. So Barracuda is increasing his eco much much faster now and he's starting to put down eco buildings as well. And I suspect that we will see that this is starting to turn and the front line will start to move back. Puck is good with the Sams, managed to pick off one heli. But this is a lot of artillery. And very classic with a few commandos from some from Barracuda always expects I would say a few commandos from Barracuda just running around in the field. This was a nice quick dig in from Puck. And he removes the infantry so he can have the tanks and artillery. I actually don't know how tanks perform in, in an entrenchment. It seems like their range is still shorter. So this is probably the right call. Now Barracuda got tanks of his own. And note how Barracuda is using his tanks. He's going for the buildings. And the Sams. Really getting the most out of his tanks. And up here. He's getting the most out of his helis. He's attacking tanks out of the range of Puck's Sams. Puck does react quite fast, but it's probably not fast enough. Maybe he will get one heli. It doesn't seem like Puck is considering any sort of expansion. And this is why you should pursue those helis even though you will not get there in time for actually defending the attack. But helis tends to tend to land in weird places and you can pick them off afterwards. So this is really nice from Park. He gets one, he might even get two or three. And now he got the tank going for the gas. Barracudas. I think he was discussing with himself if he should protect this with the tank or attack the Sams. In the meantime, it gets around the entrenchment and goes straight to the producer with the tanks. So a lot of microing going on. A 
this is gonna hurt if uh, Park loses a second producer. He lost all his Sams to these tanks now. So I think he basically is reset on the, on the Sam count. And what's the ego like? 820 versus 650, so now it's going really fast. But watching this, I kind of feel surprised that Park only won one game. Though we actually played very good players now that I look at it. We played Blam Plant Block, uh, Iron Fox, Keaton, Barracuda, and, uh, and me. And then B won 36, and B is the one he took a game off. So uh, I suspect that we'll we'll start to see more wins from Puck in his coming games because he's actually playing this quite well. I just my only concern is that he's thinking a bit too short term. Now his eco basically stalled, and when you're in this position, it's so hard to get the eco going again because it takes forever to afford anything that can give you eco. And he's not gonna get this with the tanks when Barracuda has helis up there. And you can see Barracuda is very chill about this. I think he feels like he got it under control. He knows that as long as he's just building eco, then in 10 minutes he can just roll over Puck. This is a nice push though. But it's not gonna be enough. And unfortunately he has no Sams in this attack. All the Sams are down here protecting the artillery. And I wonder if Puck is even considering expanding or if he's just like this is now or never. And one thing to note, he did exactly what I preached. Very good uh, command line here, but when you put the target on, around like as soon as the tanks get in range of this command, this will prioritize and they will just drive straight to it. So there's some micro to dive into there as well that you would actually remove this and then move the tanks with this and have a, maybe a move dot command here something like that Even though for some this might look 
threatening. But it's so clear and obvious that Barracuda is not sweating at all. He just puts down town after town. With a little bit of extra producers, to be fair. But he's not feeling like he's about to lose and just have to mass produce. Yeah, he did find the the ego to put down four towns, which is basically basically twelve hundred. And I could imagine that his eco basically exploded by now. 700. 1200. Ah, not 1200. 1130. So he's starting to reach that double up point. And now Barracuda is going to expand to this island. So yeah, well played by um, by both. I I think Puck's idea had potential, but I think switching off the Sams and then just focused even more on this gas. Or expanded up here way earlier. And now he's considering the expansion, but it's just way too late. I also think he should have started up here. I just this tactic in its own would have worked better up here, in my opinion. More gas available, wider, a more open fields to to use the tanks. Of course it's also harder to defend against helis with Sams when the when the choke is or the front line could be so wide. But yeah, I th I think he should have started up here. And then maybe put down like if he had started up here Ah, there's actually a gas here, so never mind. I was I was thinking that he could do the same tactic, but put down a shipyard and then have cruisers, or just a, a single cruiser, or maybe um, missile ships. I go over here and get this, but of course there's this gas as well, so... things considered when Puck actually started down here I think he did a good job and he had some like he was good at balancing the eco versus uh, the production of units Now he will realize that Barracuda is already over here. And even though he has a missile ship, that's uh, seven or so helis. There you go. Congratulations to Barracuda. That's a win streak of four. And uh, well played by both. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see who will be the first player, or if any, that can take a, a win uh, off of a Barracuda. Um, yeah, very, very good game. Well played by both. Good luck for the future games in the league. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.